One of the overlooked, possibly even unknown, features of Microsoft 365 is the Microsoft Whiteboard. This is a shared whiteboard. You can actually collaborate with other people in real time, and they can all draw on it and add sticky notes and things like that. This, in order to access it, you need to go to your Office 365 or Microsoft 365 and click on the App Launcher. And then it, if it's not listed in your apps here, click on All Apps and then alphabetically scroll down to the W's and click on Whiteboard. So once you've clicked on Whiteboard, you're in the browser-based version of Whiteboard. Now, there's also an iOS app and a Windows 10 app. So I have the iOS app on my iPad. I have the Windows 10 app on the Windows 10 computer I'm on right now. And both of them work, from what I can tell, the same. But those two, so the two apps, are different than the browser-based version. The browser-based version is much more scaled down. I'm going to show you that in a second here. Uh, so I actually set up most of the stuff that I want to do with my students in the app first, and then I share it with the students, and then the students can then collaborate on it using the browser. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to actually create a new whiteboard, but I'm not going to do that in the browser-based version. I'm going to skip over to the Windows 10 app just so I can demonstrate how this works. So I'm going to go over to the Windows 10 app here. I'm going to click on Create New Whiteboard. And at the bottom, you'll notice there are a number of tools. At the top, there are some tools. Um, so let's start off with what's at the bottom. At the bottom, there's the pen. So when you click on the pen, you actually have four main colors. You have multicolored ones, rainbow and galaxy, I think it's called, galaxy pen, uh, a neon yellow highlighter, an eraser, a ruler, uh, which actually is very helpful for drawing on things, I'm just going to say, uh, lasso select, so you can actually scroll around something to select it, and then undo and redo. So let me just show you very quickly about the pen tools for that. So I can, it says customize your pen. You can change the color and thickness. You actually can. You can click on it and then you can actually decide how thick a pen you want it to be. You want it to be like this. I want about that. And I can choose the color. So even though it's black right now, I could change it to blue if I wanted to, although I have a blue pen. So I'm going to click on the black pen and I'm going to draw like that. Okay. So now what else can I do with that? Well, I can go in and I can click on the eraser tool and I can erase certain sections of it. Now, keep note of this when we go to the browser-based version because it's different there. Uh, so I'm just going to erase part of what I want. All right, I can use the lasso select to select it, uh, like so. And then I can actually drag it around if I want. So it's kind of handy. Uh, you can also, in that case, you can also change um, colors as well, too. So even though you drew it in black, you can change it after the fact. I can duplicate it, I can cut, I can do an alt text, I can also go uh, smoothing out of it using the little wand. So there you go. You kind of get the idea of what's happening down there. So I'm going to click out of that and I can also choose text. So I can go into text. Now the text here, I don't have as many options. I can click on it and I can go in to change color. I can do a thumbs up. So if somebody else in collaboration thinks that's a great idea, they can do a thumbs up for that. Um, I can edit the text. And I can duplicate the text. I can cut it. I can use it into Immersive Reader where it reads out the text. And I can put in alt text. So here's my text here. I'm going to drag it. You'll notice it gets bigger. Great. OK. So I have my text. I have my drawing. Let's go down. I also have sticky notes. So with sticky notes, you can take those. And you can move them around, and you can resize them and rotate them. Uh, inside them, you type. And notice the text is different than the text for the text area. Uh, you also still have the thumbs up, the edit text, um, color background. I can change the, the sticky note color. Keep note of that. We go back to the browser-based version. I can copy it. I can, again, cut Immersive Reader alt text, all of those features. OK, so I've got that. Uh, let me straighten it around. OK. Now, here's where this part comes really interesting. It'll come to this part, in that you can uh, insert an image from either your library, from your computer, Bing search, or you can take a picture with a camera. Um, so I'm actually going to skip that for a moment, because I want to come to that one last. I'm going to click on the plus. There are lots of other options. I'm not going to go through all these. You can do a grid of notes, where it actually keeps them all in one unit. Multiple, actually, I'll just show you, like this. It's one unit, and you can actually add notes to create this whole unit to having a whole grid of things. Kind of handy, but this part does not show up in the browser-based version. So this, 
I don't use this with my students because it creates some conflict with the browser-based version. Um, list, follow-ups, list, templates. Again, I don't use any of those right now. Uh, you, you can play around with those and find out what they're like for you. Stickers, PDFs, Word documents, and PowerPoint documents. You can all add, add any of those to your thing. All right, let's get to the point here. I'm going to click on the three things over here, the settings menu, and I'm going to make one setting change. I'm going to clear the canvas. There's a few things in here. I can create ink to shape. Uh, I can uh, click Active Pen. allows you to be able to do this. Uh, go into here and just color. Notice how the pen doesn't work. Why? Active Pen is for when you want to use um, a stylus, for example, um, and you don't want to draw. You want to use it to move. So it's going to get rid of that. I'm going to turn off Active Pen here because now when I go to Pen. Pen works. All right, there we go. Um, so I'm going to clear that canvas again, and I am going to go to my picture one. So I'm going to go to my library image. Um, I just want to. I'll show this here, and then I'm going to show you where I got this from, just so I can give credit where it's due here. I'm going to choose a graphic organizer here. That's an image. I'm going to put it in here. Notice it's vertical, sideways thing. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to grab the little corner. I'm going to rotate it around so it's nice. I'm going to make it nice and big on the screen. Uh, and at the top, I'm going to come from the top and I'm going to click on the lock to lock it to the background. So now I can't actually move it around. I can move the canvas around, but the image itself stays stuck to the canvas. I want to give credit here. This actually comes from a um, website, uh, which I will post into the comment box, um, where it has a number of graphic organizers that you can use for this type of thing. And they're all creative comments. So thank you, uh, Chantel, for this. Uh, let me just show you how this might work. So now I have this graphic organizer on here and I might, I'm might i going to switch back to the browser-based version because I want students to kind of work on this. So I want them to go back. I'm going to go back here. And in here, I have, it says, no, whiteboard. When I refresh the page, the whiteboard's there. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to move this, again, the canvas so I can see it. Now, if I share this with students, students would arrive here. And what I would want them to do is I want them to fill this in. So there's a few different ways they can do that. They can use the text tool and they can type in their answers. So this is a how to do something. So maybe they have a step one and then they put in their text. So I can move that into the spot here. And uh, that's that. Now you'll notice something here. I can't do a lot with it. I can't resize it. Like if I resize the canvas, the text doesn't get bigger. Again, the browser-based version is very limited for that type of thing. So having students put direct text into these, the text is actually pretty large, and so that might become a bit of a problem. So I'm going to delete that one. Because the other option that you can also do is to do the sticky note. And so the sticky note, um, what happens with that one is, in here, they can drag it over top of something. Now you'll notice something here. Again, they cannot resize. But because the text is smaller, I found that the students actually can get more information in here and they can move things around. I kind of like that because um, they can visually see all of these. So what I actually have them do sometimes is they can actually zoom out and put the sticky notes around and then drag them to the spot where they want them to be. Any other sticky notes, maybe they create another sticky note that has some information that expands on this. I then have them do that. So let me just put that one out here. Maybe they have a step one. And what I have them do is I use the pen tool to make a connection between the two. Okay, So they might do something like that, where that shows the connection between the two sticky notes. Um, so let's erase that. All right, so back to my st sticky notes here. I can continue adding sticky notes around. Again, um, you can drag the canvas around, or you can drag the sticky note around, get it to where you want it to be. All right, so I have my graphic organizer. Let's go back and just see what that looks like on the other part. You can see how this is here like this. Now, I could tweak it. I could, in essence, in this case, go in and change background color on certain things, but I'm not going to. I just want to have the students to be able to have some time to be able to kind of mess around with things. And again, they can use that share to get a share link. They click on the share link and they get a copy link and they can share that with each other. Um, and so it if a group wants to start one and then they can share it out, they can also do that. So that's a 
pretty good overview, I think, of Microsoft Whiteboard and how you might be able to use it in the classroom. There are lots of other things you could do. You could just have them use sticky notes and make connections between things and use it for brainstorming. There's lots of different options here. Hopefully that gives you some ideas. Let me know what you think. And if you do have any questions, put them in the comment box. And if you like these videos, you can subscribe. Thanks.